Hey, what's up guys? It's Jake, aka Tag, and today we're gonna to be showcasing 2.9 Expo, but in the hands of one of the very best, if not the best 2.9 player in the entire world, Crafter. Crafter is out here playing against some of the top players in the entire world, destroying some of the hardest matchups like the Giant Double Prince Minor deck. I specifically asked him how to beat this, so let's go jump straight into the game. So in this game against Giant Double Prince Minor, you're gonna notice how Crafter just plays super aggressive. He's always gonna be pushing the opposite side of the Expo, where his opponent has his damage, and when his opponent is going in for a minor, you never want to give your opponent the ability to go in for a minor fireball, hitting the expo and the tower that they're working on, or a minor poison if they have that. So he actually starts off the game with an ice spirit and then he cycles archers and then he immediately goes in for the defensive tesla so notice how he's always going to be building off of this defensive tesla and notice the placement if you drop it there you're able to drop an expo and that defensive tesla will actually be able to support it he drops the expo purposely closer towards the tesla so that giant or whatever unit his opponent will be dropping will be targeted by that tesla as quick as possible so the Ice Spirit comes down to make sure that it, the Dark Prince is not going to get too many hits. And notice how I was talking about the Tesla. It was engaged very early on to shred the Giant. When you drop your Tesla early and you outcycle the opponent's Giant, you can actually cycle to another Expo. And your opponent has to cycle four cards. Obviously, your 2.9 Elixir Expo cycle is going to be significantly faster. Your opponent's going to be in for a tough time. As you can see, your opponent just went in for a Prince. It's a five Elixir investment, and he's not back to Giant. So... Crafter is probably just going to go defend this with an Ice Golem and then go immediately in for an Expo right after. So when you play this deck very aggressively, you're going to get, take away your opponent's ability to play super aggro. They can't go in for Miners on the tower. They actually have to use it on defense. Three Elixir Commitment that is traditionally, like when I play 2.9, sometimes I lose this matchup and I lose it really badly because my opponent just has leeway to go in for those Miners when they shouldn't be able to from watching Crafter's gameplay right now, he is shutting down the potential of his opponent playing aggressive because he's playing so aggro. That's one of the things that I've actually incorporated in other matchups, but I never really thought about that in 2.9. If you play super aggressive and you're playing it in a controlled perspective, like your opponent doesn't end up having a giant in cycle, you can really just bait out a lot of elixir from your opponent so they're going to be forced to draw or you're at least going to be able to win if they make more misplays. So Prince is in cycle again, he goes in for a Tesla, and he's able to defend this very minimally with skeletons, I believe. Yeah, skeletons are going to be able to shut that down. And he doesn't drop it immediately, he waits a little bit of time before dropping the skeletons. And the reason being is if you drop it too early, it's just going to get zapped, and that would be incredibly unfortunate if your opponent zaps that and the Prince connects to the Tesla. Tesla, yet again, is going to be dropped. It's going to be dropped a little bit lower because the Giant is on offense here. So you don't want to drop it too high in this case scenario because the Giant will get on top of it and get a significant amount of damage. Electro Wizard is completely nullified with the Skeleton's Log coming down to burst open the Dark Prince's shield. I really like how he's splitting Archers again in the back, not trying to give his opponent Fireball value on either side. And now the Archers are going to be able to pose a menacing threat against the Prince and the Dark Prince. So they're still going to give him utility. He drops another Tesla. So the best players with 2.9 will traditionally cycle as many Teslas as possible to support their Expo. No matter the matchup, but especially in this matchup, specifically drawing on higher Teslas, so he doesn't really go in for as many Expos if he doesn't have that Tesla alive. You're going to see him play way more aggro when he ends up having those Teslas. And he's stacking another Tesla, getting those Skeletons down. The Prince is not going to be able to break through. His opponent just does not have the reaction time to drop the Zap there. And the Prince was not able to get through. So now a Giant comes down right into the Tesla. Zap comes down. But guess what? Even if you end up killing that, even if you end up killing Crafter's Expo, you are not back to Giant, and he's back to Expo because of the fast cycle. So another thing, just like against Royal Giant Lightning, you always want to make sure, hey, if my opponent goes for an aggressive Royal Giant, I'm going to punish them for that because there's no way they'll be able to get back to it. I can Skeletons around the Barb Barrel, and then I can break through. That's what I've learned from Crafter in that matchup. And in this matchup, it reigns true as well. He's just completely playing super aggressive in a matchup that he doesn't have good defensive capabilities. The Skeletons get zapped. Ice Spirit is really not going to kill the Miner. So in that case scenario, you, you can't really play this matchup without playing aggressive. So he's going in for Skeletons again on the Miner. If his opponent saps it, yes, it's going to be a negative Elixir trade, but his opponent will get a massive advantage from a damage perspective. So he's going in for another Expo, even though he doesn't end up having the Tesla there, because he has the Archers and he knows that the Archers will be able to kill the Giant. His opponent actually whips a Fireball there, and now Crafter's seen his opponent around 1100 HP and he's elected to fireball cycle. So that's another thing. 
when his tower is at 2,000, he can actually do that, but if his tower is lower, let's say like 1,500, he probably would not feel comfortable fireball cycling because his opponent has minor, and then he would just be able to break through and do too much damage. He's going to go skeletons round on the Dark Prince, go drop an Ice Golem, and he's going to continuously cycle back to another fireball and take away the W. So his opponent is saucing out the Yawn, just an utter embarrassment losing this matchup, and Crafter should feel pretty good about himself. I learned a lot in that matchup, as you guys saw how many times I reiterated being aggressive. He was able to overcome a very difficult, if not the hardest matchup in the entire game. His opponent doesn't even have Electro Dragon. He's going to end up having the double Princes. Usually it's going to be significantly easier if they end up having an Electro Dragon boss save variation because they're not going to have as many answers on the ground. But if they have double Prince, I feel like this is the absolute hardest matchup in the game. And Crafter made it look super easy by playing so aggressive. So let's go jump right on to the next game and see what Crafter has in store for us. So the next matchup that Crafter is going to be showcasing today is against 2.6 Hog Rider. One of the better 2.6 players and ladder as well so definitely when you're playing this matchup as a 2.6 player you always go ice column and musketeer to shut down that initial expo and if you can you want to go hog rider opposite but if your opponent fireballs then obviously you have to go in for a hog rider but generally what ends up happening is the hog rider baits out the tesla from the opposite lane and then the expo doesn't really break through because the musketeer and the ice Golem are able to shut it down so yeah there's the ice Golem and the musketeer fireball comes down he's actually able to hit both usually the 2.6 player is able to separate them a little bit more but Crafter gets an amazing fireball down and actually baits out the Hog Rider and his opponent's not able to go opposite lane. Gets a little bit of a connection and gets log damage. So one of the things that you're going to notice here is Crafter is probably going to end up shifting lanes pretty frequently because his opponent is going to be able to fireball the Expo and fireball the Tower. And if his opponent gets too many of those and shuts down a lot of Expos, then he would be able to consecutively rack up damage on a Tower and make it very weak. And you really don't want that to happen as an Expo player in this matchup. You're going to be shifting lanes and you're probably going to commit to a lane when you get a ton of damage. You're not really going to be super committed. He's going to end up going for an Expo here. I assume it once his opponent gets damage on top of that Expo and that Tower, then he's going to start shifting. So Log comes down to make sure that Crafter can't do too much, but notice that Ice Spirit placement. If you drop it in that corner, you're much more likely to uh, prevent your opponent from getting a Musketeer on top or an Ice Spirit on top, and your opponent probably won't log that corner as often as they'll just log down the middle or log off to the side. So that little corner where he dropped that Ice Spirit is super important. That's where all the best 2.9 players drop their Ice Globes. That's where they drop their Ice Spirits. And if you do that and you implement that into your play, you're going to be able to defend a lot more frequently than you otherwise would have. So his opponent goes in for Ice Golem Ops lane. You guys see how he drops the archers in the middle to make sure that the Ice Golem dies. So then he's able to lock on to things that are important a little bit quicker. He gets that Musketeer because of that, and he logs it to kill it. So that was really, really well played. If you guys want to take something away from that interaction, when your opponent decides to go opposite lane to kite and distract your Expo with an Ice Golem or any tank, you can drop archers in the middle, but make sure that they're separated enough from the Expo so they can't immediately be fireballed. And what that does is it ends up making sure, he does it again, that your Expo is going to retarget and be a little bit more of an issue sooner than rather than later. Goes in for a Fireball and a Log on top of that Hog Rider, so that was super aggressive. He didn't even Fireball Musketeer, guys. He Fireballed a Hog Rider. So that's really cool. That's something that I didn't know. Sometimes I guess that can be useful if you propel it back far enough so it doesn't get on top of the Expo, and especially if your opponent doesn't understand or doesn't know that that's the case. He unfortunately does get the Cannon Lock on, but the Expo is still alive and doing very, very well. You guys have seen what I was talking about earlier, right? Crafter has not had any fear about shifting lanes consistently. He's not committed to either side right now. He's gotten a lot of damage on the left-hand side, but it's still not a full true Expo lock. And another thing is, if you're uncomfortable in any situation in this matchup, what you want to do is drop a defensive Expo. Notice where he drops a defensive Expo. On the tower that has more HP, so his opponent's not able to fireball it. And now he's starting to fireball cycle. I wonder if Crafter is actually going to fireball cycle from this range. It wouldn't be crazy to do that if he drops a lot of defensive Expos. He, he would be able to do that, actually. I don't know. Uh, that's something that uh, wouldn't be super surprising to me, but that's uh, one of the ways that Dan Gannon plays against Jack. When I've watched Dan Gannon play against Jack, for instance, one of the other top 2.9 Expo players, he drops a lot of defensive Expos. And Jack, you guys know him, he's the best 2.6 player in the entire world. Usually, Jack wins every matchup that is semi in his favor, but Dan Gannon is able to draw in worst case scenarios against him from what I've seen by just dropping defensive expos and Jack is never really ever able to win. I've seen Jack play that matchup a lot and he's never won. So basically, if you're ever uncomfortable, do what Crafter did, drop a defensive expo and he actually was able to break through there and snatch the W. Super well played by him. Cannon missed and unfortunately for 
the uh, Japanese player. He just, that's all it took. It only takes one expo connection. So basically just play safe until your opponent slips up and you can fireball even hog riders plus ice golems and cannons. If there's not a musketeer there, don't be afraid. Try to break through, try to get that connection, play safe if you can. He actually separated away that Tesla from the Expo, so his opponent wasn't able to get fireball value. Usually the Tesla is dropped in the middle, but he already ended up having a defensive Expo there. And as a result, he didn't want to get fireball value on top of the Tesla, the tower, and or the Expo and the uh, Tesla. So very well played by Crafter. Lots of things to take away from that. Constantly shifting lanes, play defensive Expos to stay safe. And let's move on to the next one and let's keep learning. So we got our next top ladder match against Lava Hound Bait. So what is Crafter gonna be doing in this situation? Usually, as a 2.9 Expo player, you're gonna to wanna to go same lane as the Lava Hound Balloon. Let's see if Crafter does anything different because there is gonna be a lot of bait proponents and a miner. Maybe it's gonna change how he plays. Drops a defensive Tesla, just like he did earlier. That's something that he has no fear about doing. If he has to cycle, he's been dropping that defensive Tesla at all points. So since he has that defensive Tesla there and he sees a Lava Hound, very interesting to see a Expo there. I think that that Expo actually kites the balloon and that's gonna be actually really, really well played because the Tesla would not kite the balloon, but the Expo does. So therefore, in effect, the balloon will actually go towards that. So if you're afraid of cycling your Tesla in that position because it won't hit an air unit, that was a really clutch Tesla and Expo combination. That Expo is something that I learned. I did not know that before and it got damaged on the left-hand side and it actually was able to pull everything into the Tesla. That was brilliant. That was really cool, man. So now I'm gonna be way less apprehensive about cycling my Teslas there opposed to maybe like holding on to them and just leaking elixir. I feel very comfortable now cycling my Teslas there because that was one of the main concerns that I had before prior to watching this. Hey man, if I cycle my Tesla there, what happens if you just Lava Hound's opposite lane? Well, you have your answer, guys. That's a uh, pro play. So Lava Hound comes down. He's gonna go in for another Expo here and he's gonna play super aggressive, same lane. Notice how much damage you got on the left-hand side, guys. He still went same lane. He did not decide to go for the left-hand tower. So that's one of the pinnacles that you have to understand when you are playing Expo against Lava Hound Balloon. No matter what, you wanna go same lane because you wanna be able to defend. I wonder if those archers are gonna get hit by the death bomb. I really hope not. I think he might have spaced them out well enough. Yeah, wow, yep. Why would I even question him? Why would I question him? He's just playing too well. Goes in for the ice golem to make sure that the archers stay alive. And his opponent was expecting like skeletons, I think. Archers are actually gonna get some chip damage on the left-hand side. He's gonna be going in for the right-hand side again. I guess he's just gonna try to take both powers and assert dominance to the highest degree. He's gonna fireball that? Oh man, really quick on that as well. Ends up doing a ton of damage to the right-hand side. And uh, I feel like Crafter is just in a great spot to win this game. I think that he's probably gonna end up going for another expo and Balloon comes down. So yeah, he's gonna go for another expo. He has Tesla in cycle. I wonder how he's gonna position this. I assume, yeah, the expo is gonna kite the balloon. That's evident. You can probably go for Tesla lower to make sure it targets the balloon first. Yep. Super well played. The balloon was targeted first because it curved off to the side, allowing him enough space to work in that Tesla and uh, just surgically assassinate it. So, so well played. He's gonna go for another expo and he's just gonna show us a masterclass on how to evade any damage from Lava Loon. Just drop your Teslas in the middle if you want to cycle and consistently go same lane and it's a pretty easy matchup. So GG and well played to Crafter. Let's move on to the next one, guys. So our next matchup is going to be against Three Musketeers Elixir Collector. In this matchup, it's actually quite difficult to win if your opponent has a lot of tanks, as we see right here. We see the Dark Prince, we see the Hunter, we see the Ice Skull, and we see the Bathroom. It's going to be interesting to see if we see Barbro or not. Anyway, we are already seeing three tanks right out of the gate from this Savage and he's going to be spamming Crafter completely no mercy. So he's going to have to go Skeletons off of the Slain, trying to defend with the minimum amount of Elixir. I wonder if he goes Archers to bait out the Bandit. He does, and he actually has to go and Fireball and eat a Bandit hit. That's quite unfortunate, the start there for Crafter. But, you know, it takes priority Fireballing that Elixir Collector early on, so then you get back to Fireball for the Three Musketeers. If you guys noticed what he did there, he actually put priority on Fireballing that Elixir Collector first. So he was able to get back to the Fireball and Cycle. Obviously, a card that you cycle first can come back to your hand. So opposed to dropping defensive cards there, he actually went for Fireball before that. Very, very interesting to notice the order of operations from Crafter there, and I, I think that was pretty cool. He's going to end up splitting Archers again, make sure that he's able to defend everything, just playing very defensive passive not going in for expos when he sees bridge spam so he's playing this a little bit differently than he was playing the giant minor deck and he's playing this a little bit differently than he was playing against lava hound because he's just 
very pinned down by the amount of bridge spam there. So when he sees that his opponent's cards are out of cycle that he used, the Battle Ram is not in cycle, and the Dark Prince wasn't in cycle, he went in for the Axe Belt. He waited for his opportunity. He knew that his opponent really couldn't punish him super hard. He goes in for the Ice Comb to go and tank. His opponent was thinking, hey, that Dark Prince is about to get on top of that Expo. And it did after he snowballed, but he had to spend more Elixir. So Crafter is just forcing out more and more Elixir from his opponent, feeling out what his entire deck composition is. And I feel like Crafter has a pretty good idea that this is going to be a 3 Musketeer deck after seeing the Elixir Collector, because nothing else really runs that, especially after seeing the Hunter. So he's going to go log back the Hunter. The Hunter will retarget onto the Ice Golem. Oh, that was really smart. That's something that I'm going to start incorporating as well. I really like that he logged it back, dropped an Ice Golem, to make sure that the Hunter is going to be targeting from a distance. I wonder if he gets an Ice Spirit down in time. No. So that was a little bit unfortunate that he wasn't able to. Very high Teslas as well, guys. His opponent really doesn't have any way of killing the Tesla, so I guess you can drop it up there. If your opponent ends up having Mega Minion or something, obviously they don't have it in 3 Musketeer decks, but usually against Golem, you never really do that. Usually against any, like, 3 Musk, uh, the Giant plus Minor deck, you, you didn't really see him do that, right? You don't really see uh, that placement too, too commonly. Usually it's a little bit further back, and uh, then it chips away on the Giant, or if your opponent has Electro Dragon or Mega Minion, you have to be a little bit scared about that, but against a 3 Musketeer deck that does not have any air answer to you. You can go and drop your Teslas wherever you want in the middle, and obviously the Bridge Spam doesn't really wrap around and hit them extremely easily. So even the Expo is dropped a little bit further in the middle, and uh, it takes a little bit longer for his opponent's Battle Ram, his opponent's Bandit, his opponent's uh, Bridge Spam and Dark Prince to get to that. So I really like that. He's going to end up going for another Tesla here, and... His opponent really hasn't had an opportunity to even breathe and set up an Elixir Collector. I love that from Crafter, because if he goes in for Elixir Collector, then he baits out a Fireball, and then Crafter's put into a situation where, you know what, he has to play defensive with an Expo and defend against all this Bridge Bam and through Musketeers. He is stacking Teslas, playing super aggressive, and his opponent has no room to breathe. He's even going to go for a Fireball on top of that, oh my gosh, against the 3 Musketeer Elixir Collector deck. Goes in for the Killing Blow by fireballing the hunter. That's some audacity, guys. That is some confidence if I've ever seen it. Very few people would ever have the balls to do that, but Crafter does, and that's kind of what happens when you play 2.9 at this level and to that extent. You just know that you can actually finish off the killing blow with that last fireball. Crafter takes the W, and his opponent really wasn't even <laughs> able to drop three Musketeers the entire game. So it was essentially a bridge bam deck with Elixir Collector against Crafter, and Crafter just demolished it. So for our final game today, we're going to be covering a matchup that I have no idea how he won. This is going to be a Barbaro Pekka Graveyard deck. This is another matchup just like the Giant Miner that I have struggled with so, so much. When I see this sometimes, I'm just like, how do we win? He's got Barbaro Pekka and he's going to have Furnace. He's got Baby Dragon. All these cards are exceedingly obnoxious. So I want to see how Crafter plays this. Does he play defensive? Does he play aggressive? What are his win conditions for winning this? So we end up seeing the Archer split. Maybe he's thinking, hey, okay, well, he probably knows this guy from High Ladder. AZ is a pretty common graveyard user. So he probably knows exactly what he's running. He's going to go in for a defensive Tesla there, a snipe the Baby Dragon. He's probably assuming that graveyard might even come out there, but his opponent doesn't. He actually goes in for a Furnace at the river to get Fire Spirits right on top, and the Furnace is actually going to be tanking. That's a really interesting play. Log comes down from Crafter. He's going to get a considerable amount of damage on the right-hand side. So he might have already won the game because his opponent kind of overextended with the Baby Dragon and other stuff in the opposite lane. So if your opponent does overextend and you did, do take a formidable amount of damage, I guess like one of the things from Crafter that we just learned is just go home for the expo, test the water, see what's up. So Crafter was actually able to come back formidably with a uh, solid 1,600 damage on the other side. So... Very well played on his end. Ice Spirit comes down just to get a little bit more chip. And I really like cycling Ice Spirit opposed to dropping Skeletons as my first card in general and just cycling it in general because you're going to get tower damage. Skeletons don't really do too much. Also, Skeletons are generally better against like P.E.K.K.A.s and you generally want to be saving those for defending and distracting more than an Ice Spirit. I think it's a little bit better on defense. So unfortunately, Crafter does not end up having the Ice Spirit or the Skeletons there. So he's not really able to prolong the HP of the Expo for much longer. But he's going to go drop Skeletons to make sure that that P.E.K.K.A. does not get anywhere near his tower. So at this point, yes, he has a lead. But how does he break through it this time? Like, th this is really hard to break through in Double Elixir. AZ has done a pretty decent job at keeping the tower alive. Archers are here getting cycled into him. Is he going to log? He does log. But that means he doesn't end up having log to clean up the Graveyard Skeletons. So Baby Dragon coming down, 
Graveyard is in hand. He knows that his opponent potentially will do that, so he's going to go drop a defensive expo that cannot be poisoned. So if you guys notice the right-hand tower, it actually is not going to be able to hit the expo and the right-hand tower with the poison. Very well played. Goes in for a fireball to cycle. So it looks like Crafter has just realized it's near impossible to break through and get tower damage against this guy when he's got a P.E.K.K.A. there. I'm not even going to attempt to go opposite lane because I have so much damage on that side. I'm going to drop a defensive Expo. I'm going to drop a defensive Tesla. And I'm going to try to counter push after. He's dropping double Tesla. Dropping Archers here. This is kind of the, the format that I guess you need. You need to shred the tank. You need to make sure that the tower is retargeted on the Skeletons. Drop a defensive Expo so that it's also working away on the Skeletons. And then you can break through when your opponent doesn't have an Elixir because they just overcommitted on offense. And that's what Crafter did. So... He ended up really setting up and gearing up for that at graveyard. He knew that his opponent had one opportunity to get damage, and he made sure that he was able to minimize the damage and then play super aggressive when the Pekka was not in cycle because the deck cycles very slowly. So very well played to Crafter. What I learned in that matchup is play really, really aggressive if your opponent decides to play aggressive on one side. If you get early chip damage, consistently play defensive expos. And then as you defend, if your opponent does not end up having P.E.K.K.A. in cycle, which they should never have it back in cycle because the deck cycles very slowly, then you apply a lot of aggression and then you can actually finish off the game. So very, very well played from Crafter. He played that deck and that matchup super defensively at one point, actually having two Teslas on the map, a defensive expo and a set of archers to clean up that graveyard. So sometimes you really have to go guns blazing on defense to walk away with the W in this matchup. Honestly, I was incredibly impressed by Crafter's gameplay today, especially the giant miner deck that he beat with ease. I couldn't believe that, and I'm definitely going to be incorporating his aggressive tendencies into my own gameplay. The Lava Hound matchup, where he dropped that defensive Tesla and then was still able to make some use out of it with that aggressive expo. There are a lot of things that I learned, and I just have to give a huge shout out to Crafter for coming on the channel. Make sure, if you haven't already, to go follow him on Twitter, give him some kind words, give him some love, because whenever he comes on the channel, I always learn something new, and I'm sure you guys too. His Twitter is at CrafterKane, and it will be down below in the description of the video and in the pinned comment. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to sauce me a fat thumbs up on it. Also, let me know down below in the comment section if there's any specific deck or pro that you guys want on the channel for the next deep dive into Deck Masters. Thanks for watching, thanks for chilling with me, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.